Hello everybody. Let's talk about the subdivisions and omenta which is peritoneum part 2. So in the first video, in the first part, I'll keep the link below. We talked about what the peritoneum is, what are the parts of the peritoneum, what is meant by mesothelium and we also talked about the peritoneal fluid, an abnormal collection of peritoneal fluid which is ascites. In this session, let's talk about the greater sac, the lesser sac, the greater omentum and the lesser omentum. So what we have already seen is that the peritoneum and its parts can be compared to a fist going into a balloon. And so that's the same way organs grow from the back of the abdominal wall into the peritoneal cavity and they take with them a layer of the peritoneum which covers it. So the organ is not actually within the cavity, it is covered and separated from the cavity by a layer of peritoneum which is called the visceral peritoneum and the parietal peritoneum coats the inner surface of the abdominal cavity. So we have seen this stretched all around on the inside of the abdomen. Visceral is stretched over the organ or the gut and the mesentery which is double layered allows for vessels, nerves, blood, lymphatics and all those things and that suspends whatever organs and guts are there within the peritoneal cavity. Now when we talk about how the organ pushes into the abdominal cavity, it is a little hard to imagine. So let's take a longitudinal section of the abdomen which looks like this. I know it doesn't look like much. So let's get our bearings and place the vertebra on the back. Now that is better. We will see how this looks like, how this becomes an abdominal cavity in the longitudinal section. So that is the posterior aspect with the vertebra and the outline, general outline of the abdominal cavity. Let's place the parietal peritoneum lining the inside of the abdominal cavity over here. And now we have organs which develop behind the parietal peritoneum. If you can see those small yellow dots, we will make them grow into the peritoneal cavity. So these organs when they start growing they push into the peritoneal cavity as you can see. They carry with them a layer of the peritoneum and eventually they end up looking like this. So we have parietal peritoneum on the outside. The part of the peritoneum in close association with the organs and the gut are the visceral ones and the double layered peritoneal uh, membranes which are suspending these structures from the posterior abdominal wall. These are the mesenteries or mesocolons depending on what organ is suspended. Now this diagram now looks like one of those diagrams that you see in your textbooks. So we label them and compare it. So that is the liver, there you have the stomach. This is the transverse colon and there you have the small intestine. Doesn't this look like one of our diagrams from the text. Let's have one of those diagrams and here it is. So let's label the contiguous structures. Here we have the liver, that is the stomach, the transverse colon and the small intestine. Now the text diagram is beginning to make sense I hope. What about the sacs and the folds of the peritoneum? Now if you look at the stomach over there below the liver, you can see this as I have drawn a small diverticulum or a projection below the stomach. This visceral peritoneal layer starts to grow down slowly and slowly. Let's label the two numbers, the layers of this visceral layer and that is the first layer on the outside and the second layer on the inside. And once it reaches almost the bottom of the abdominal cavity, it folds back on itself and goes right all the way up. Now let's label these two layers as 3 and 4. So now you can see in this diagram layers 1 and 4 of this fold of visceral peritoneum are continuous. They are basically the same. We just named them 1 and 4 because 1 is in front and 4 is behind. Similarly we have 2 and 3 which are basically the same layer but since they are folded we have named them or numbered them differently. Now this fold of peritoneum goes all the way back up and fuses with the transverse colon on its anterosuperior surface. And after this we can divide the peritoneum into, peritoneal cavity into certain folds and sacs and we'll see what they are. Let's see. So basically there are two folds to the peritoneal cavity, inside the peritoneal cavity and two sacs in simple terms. So the fold between the liver 
and the stomach that you can see the red fold over there a small bit of visceral peritoneum connecting the liver and the stomach that is called the lesser omentum so that's the liver the stomach and the lesser omentum over there the big fold of peritoneum that we saw in the previous slide which fold came all the way down and folded back on itself that is the greater omentum and that's the second fold that lies between the stomach and the transverse colon so there you have the greater omentum now once the greater omentum is placed we can divide the peritoneum into two sacs basically everything that you see belongs to the greater sac of the peritoneum uh, but there is one area which is hidden behind the greater omentum and the stomach and that is the lesser sac over there so the lesser sac is a hidden sac behind the stomach and the greater omentum within the greater omentum and the lesser omentum behind the lesser omentum the greater sac is what you see when you open the abdominal cavity and these two sacs are in communication so we'll see that later and let's go into the greater omentum so when you open the abdominal cavity this is a cadaveric uh, prosection video or prosection series of photos we place the incisions and we open and what we see is the greater omentum over there let's label it there's the stomach and the liver and this is the greater omentum which is an apron like fold of visceral peritoneum now that is what it looks like in a schematic diagram so the greater omentum is this apron like folded visceral peritoneum you can use it for your answers and that's over there it starts off from what is the greater curvature of the stomach so here we have the greater curvature of the stomach and the greater omentum starts off from the, there but the greater curvature is also subject to two other folds of peritoneum which you'll see there are a total of three folds the first one is the greater omentum also called the gastro omental ligament the greater omentum and then we have the gastrocolic ligament and then we have the second fold which is the gastrosplenic ligament and lastly we have the gastro phrenic ligament so these are all peritoneal folds which connect the stomach to different parts of the abdominal cavity the gastrosplenic extends from the greater curvature to the spleen the gastrophrenic extends from the greater curvature to the diaphragm and the greater omentum plays a very important role in containing infections of the peritoneum and that is why it is also called the polisman of the abdomen now let's see what is the lesser omentum the lesser omentum is basically a fold of visceral peritoneum which stretches between the stomach the duodenum and the liver so let's label these parts and see the fold of peritoneum i hope you have already noticed it in the picture so there you have the lesser omentum so the lesser omentum is attached to the lesser curvature of the stomach the stomach has a lesser curvature also and has a right free margin the right side corresponds to the liver side and there is a free margin free margin meaning it is not attached or closed and this free margin forms the communication between the greater sac on the outside and the lesser sac which is lying behind the lesser omentum so that is the entry point of the lesser sac let's see it in our earlier picture over there so we have the lesser sac and the lesser omentum in bright pink and let's place the arrow and that is how the greater sac communicates with the lesser sac now what is the greater sac in definition it extends from the diaphragm to the pelvic floor it is a huge area but it can be divided into two parts with relation to the transverse colon so a supracolic compartment defines this area which is lying above the level of the transverse colon and it has the stomach the liver and the spleen and below the level of the transverse colon we have the infracolic compartment which has the small intestines the ascending and the descending colons what about the lesser sac so the lesser sac is a closed sac located behind the stomach that's the last part of our small tutorial and this is also called the omental bursa because it is a dead space into which the stomach can expand so if you eat a lot there is space for the stomach to expand because we have the lesser sac behind it even though in children the lesser sac extends all the way to the bottom of the greater omentum once puberty sets sets in the greater omentum sort of fuses or specifically the second and the third layers fuse and that reduces the size of the lesser sac 
still above the level of the transverse colon. But this, uh, this uh, fusion of the two layers of the peritoneum is called zygosis. Zygosis takes place at many different areas of the abdominal cavity which we will see in later videos and we already seen and coming to the next point we have already seen that the lesser sac communicates with the greater sac via the foramen of Winslow. So now let us see where it is located. Here we have the abdomen and the lesser sac located behind the stomach and the greater amenta. So I hope that makes the peritoneum somewhat clear for all of you and we will see and talk about something else in anatomy in the next video. Thank you so much.